Today we're diving into five tips on getting better handheld footage for your wedding films. So let's talk about what you need first. We are now living in the beautiful age of image stabilization, where you can capture moments skillfully and artfully without the use of monopods, tripods, and even gimbals. While those tools are still relevant and serve a purpose, I believe that handheld filmmaking has really made its way to the forefront of the wedding filmmaking process. So when it comes to one of the first things you're gonna need, that is of course a camera with image stabilization which luckily is in most modern day cameras and you can find one at every corner. Sony's line like the a7S II, a7S III, and of course Canon R5, R6, even the C70 with its digital stabilization features. Whatever weapon of choice, having some form of image stabilization in your camera or your lens is gonna give you the flexibility to get those creative smooth shots and give you a much better end result. Next is going to be to consider adding some accessories to your camera. For me, this includes a cage, a top handle, a side grip, and a monitor for easy viewing. Having these accessories on your camera is gonna give you better grip and support on your camera throughout the wedding day. And by adding more weight to your camera, this is gonna give you more control and generate less shake within your footage. If you are interested in learning what I use for my camera setup, you can find that video here or check the description below. Now let's talk about lenses. Now you can approach your lens selection a couple of different ways. If you currently have a camera that does not have image stabilization, then consider adding a lens to your gear bag that does have this feature on it. But if you do have a camera that has image stabilization, then it's not necessarily required for you to have a lens with that feature as well, but it is a nice added bonus. By having a camera with image stabilization and a lens with image stabilization, you're gonna get dual, dual. Image, image stabilization. stabilization. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but but I did try it with the Canon R6 in the 70 to 200, and it was like smooth as butter. So when it comes to focal lengths while shooting handheld, you just want to be mindful of which focal length is really helping you tell this story. So for instance, if you are doing a tracking shot, it's best to use a 24 or a 35 especially if you want to get clean and smooth shots because having a wider perspective is gonna generate less shake than say a longer lens like an 85 or 135 because longer lenses tend to accentuate your camera movement more so than a wider lens. For me, my lens of choice right now is the Sigma 24 to 70. Now that we talked about some of the essentials that you're gonna need, let's dive into the meat and potatoes of this whole entire video and that is some handheld filmmaking techniques. Tip number one is gonna to be to tuck your elbows. Keeping your elbows tucked while shooting is gonna give you much more control over your camera and it's gonna feel more natural opposed to having your elbows out. You wanna make sure that you're not overexerting yourself too early because having your elbows out is gonna cause your muscles to fatigue much faster and generate more shake within your footage. Tip number two is gonna to be to hold your camera close. With your elbows tucked, you wanna make sure that you are also holding the camera close to your body. If you have the camera away from your body, you're gonna experience more shake and fatigue so in order to get really smooth and steady shots, these first two steps are critical. I usually keep my camera just above my belly button, but it's really about finding what's more comfortable for you. This can be on your hip, on your chest, on your leg even. It's really just about finding your own comfort level. But using your body to support your camera and your movement is gonna give you a much cleaner end result. Tip number three is it's all in the hips. Now, when you are thinking about your movement, you don't want this to come from your arms. You want it all to come from your hips and your legs. So for instance, if you're wanting to do a push-in shot, you're gonna want to extend your legs a little bit and lean forward with your camera, close to your body and with your elbows tucked. This move kind of feels like you're on an escalator and it doesn't give you a ton of range, especially if you are looking for a long tracking shot. So then for that, I recommend walking gently to your couple but you wanna be mindful of your steps and make sure that you aren't crashing your heels down to the ground because this will generate a lot more shake within your footage. So for me, I just pretend like I'm walking on a rope and I just keep everything close to my body. My camera is like pressed against my chest, my elbows are tucked, my knees are bent, and I am just slowly moving forward towards my couple. Tip number four is shoot in 60 frames per second. Now for me, I am always shooting in 60 frames per second for a lot of different reasons. 
but especially if you are considering going handheld on your next wedding, you'll want to make sure that you are shooting in 60 frames per second, at least 60 frames per second. This is gonna be your best friend as it's gonna allow you to slow your footage down later in post if you need to cover up any shakes or bumps within your footage. Especially if you are going for a clean and polished look, this is gonna help you get those smooth shots in your footage. But for me, I personally love the authenticity that you get with those subtle shakes in your footage as I feel that it really accents the emotion within your story. So either way, if you are shooting handheld or you're trying to get nice, clean, slow footage, make sure that you are shooting in 60 frames per second. Tip number five is gonna be to cradle the baby. So especially for camera movement and getting smooth, clean shots while shooting handheld, it's gonna be important to cradle your camera like a baby. So for instance, I would have my camera on my chest like so, my right hand is on the grip, side handle, uh, top handle, whichever handle you want to use. And then the left hand or right hand is gonna rest underneath your camera. So with your elbows tucked, your camera close to your body, your left hand underneath your camera, this is gonna give you a lot more control and stability within your movement. It also helps take some of the weight off of your camera and gives you another point of contact for smoother shots. A good rule of thumb is more weight equals less shake. So definitely consider adding more weight to your setup so that you can balance out your camera. It's not just for the aesthetics, but it will give you more control and assistance while shooting handheld. Tip number six is the camera strap. Let's say you just don't have the money to build out your camera rig just yet and add all this weight to your system. You can always use the camera strap that came with your camera. With the strap connected, you pull the strap against your neck, creating three points of contact, and this will help keep your camera smooth. Now, over time, this may give you a sore neck and fatigue your neck muscles, but it is the more frugal solution until you can add more weight to your setup. All right, guys, well, that is the end of this week's video. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you found these tips helpful and valuable in some way. If you did, it would mean so much if you consider liking and subscribing and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know what you're struggling with this week. If you have any weddings coming up where you're going to be testing out shooting handheld for the first time. Either way, I'd love to hear from you guys. So until next time, keep creating and telling beautiful stories. Peace.